Okay, in this video we're going to look at follower. So you're going to have to have a look at the questions underneath, answer those and check your answers against what I'm going to say in this video. Then at the same time, the ones that are in pink, so there are five of them, those are the ones that I'd probably suggest that you learn for your GCSE exam. Okay, let's get going. Seamus Heaney then is the son of a farmer, is one of nine children and this poem is written from his perspective and it's all about his father and how he wanted, he used to want to follow in his father's footsteps, but then doesn't anymore. So it starts off with, my father worked with a horse plow. So you can see immediately that his father plows. He's a farmer. And we go into this kind of important quotation, his shoulders globed like a full sail strung. So the idea of them globing, globes are round, obviously uh, we see the planet Earth uh, is a globe. And basically it says that his shoulders are round, so they're very muscly. And again, the simile, like a full sail strung. A sail, like a, a ship's sail, if it's got a uh, wind in it, if it's full sail, then they bulge. They bulge with the wind, and so it suggests that his muscles also bulge as well. So his father was incredibly powerful, a very strong man with big shoulders because of uh, the strength of working on a farm, basically. Now, it goes on to say between the shafts and the furrow, and I just said that furrow, this is the line made by a plough. And there's a lot of farming lexics, uh, lexics here. You don't necessarily need to know it all, but it helps at the same time. So I'll just explain what those words mean. Yeah, the furrow, it's a line made by a plough. It moves on to say, the horse strained at his clicking tongue. Now, the interesting part about this one is that the horse strained. The verb choice here shows that the horse is working really hard. And all the father has to do is click his tongue. So the horse works really hard and the father is barely doing anything. It says that he's really good at his job. He's a very good person um, to run a farm and be in charge of horses because they obey his commands. So he's very, very good at farming, which is then backed up in the next stanza at the start of that minor sentence, an expert. So as I said, it is a minor sentence. It's just a declaration from the poet. It says he's an expert. There's no room for any argument there. And it's a reflection of how good a farmer that his uh, father was. It goes on to say he would set the wing. And the wing is an adjustable part of the plow that sets the height of the blades. And fit the bright steel pointed sock. This sock part is the bit that cuts into the soil. And the sod rolled over without breaking. The sod is the ground or the earth that's been turned over. And the head rig is the next part at the head rig with a single pluck. So, with a single pluck of reins, the sweating team turned around and back into the land. Um, the head rig then is the corner of the field. It's a really tricky part, basically, to turn a plough around in. And it says that his father can do it with a single pluck of the reins really, really easily. So, the head rig, just the corner of the field. The most tricky part to navigate with a plough, basically. So then, moving on. With a single pluck of reins, the sweating team turned round and back into the land. All he has to do is a single pluck of the reins, really minimal effort, and the team, the horses, are sweating. So they're putting in lots of effort, and the father is doing barely anything again. It says that he's very much in control and very good at his job. He moves on to say his eye narrowed and angled at the ground, mapping the furrow exactly. So his eye looks at the field in front of him, angles, so he looks with an angle at the ground and he maps it exactly. He knows exactly what he's doing just with a luck. So it says that he's very competent at his job and Heaney admires this. There's a real sense of admiration basically because his father is such a good farmer, so in control of his horses and knows exactly what he's doing that actually he's turned into this kind of art form that Heaney admires. He moves on to say, I stumbled in his hobnailed wake. Hobnailed then, it's just uh, basically hobnail boots, really hard wearing um, boots and it's basically the sole is nailed on. So in this case, I stumbled in his hobnailed wake. Wake is like obviously um, the parting of water when you've had a boat go through it. But at the same time, in this case, it's the parting of the soil of the plough, which is interesting. And Heaney, the young Heaney used to stumble in this wake, these furrows created by this plough because it wasn't all that um, coordinated, basically, and he stumbled. He wasn't as sure as his father. So there's a real contrast between father and son here. 
Heaney then goes on to say that he used to fall, so he fell sometimes on the polished sod, so he used to fall over in these furrows, um, because again, he's not very coordinated, he's awkward, and so he moves awkwardly, whereas his father doesn't. His father's very competent and very skilled. So in light of this then, I suppose, sometimes he rode me on his back, dipping and rising to his plod. You can imagine them walking across this field that's just been ploughed, and obviously it's got lots and lots of furrows, lots and lots of... Um, basically ups and downs in the field created by that plow and they're going up and down and his father's playing with his son uh, so it shows that he's a really good father as well as a farmer at the same time here as well so they used to have fun together too moving on then it shows this admiration a little bit more it says i wanted to grow up and plow to close one eye and stiffen my arm so he used to want to be just like his father and as the first of nine children and a male he was probably expected to take on the farm, however, uh, he didn't because he was such a bright student at his school, he won a scholarship to a boarding school and actually pursued that instead. And so his brothers actually took over the farm, um, but he was probably the one that was expected to at the start. We also see he wants to grow up and plough, he admires his father and he wants to do the same thing. To close one eye, to stiffen my arm, uh, those are just repetitions of what his father's been doing earlier on in the poem. However, he says, all I ever did was follow in his broad shadow around the farm. So, if he's in his father's shadow, he cannot live up to the same standard uh, that his father has set, basically. And so, he's never going to live up to that standard. Moving on then, at the end, you've got, I was a nuisance, tripping, falling, yapping, always. So you've got a list of verbs here, tripping, yapping, falling, uh, to show just how he wasn't any good at this farming life. And he used to actually make his father's life a little bit more difficult uh, because he was just annoying his father a little bit rather than actually doing something useful with his time. So he was a nuisance uh, and not a good farmer. However, it changes massively. So we've got, but today it is my father who keeps stumbling behind me. And so you've got stumbling here. And you can see back in the fourth stanza at the start, it says, I stumbled in his hobnail weight. So you can see the roles are reversed. So... It's no longer Heaney stumbling, but the father who's stumbling. And the father is stumbling behind him. And so you get this role reversal. Now Heaney is the competent one. And all right, he's not competent at farming, but he's certainly competent at his uh, life as a playwright and a poet. And it's the father who will not go away. It's the father who is the nuisance. And so you can see this fantastic uh, change of fate, basically. Heaney is now the person that is competent and sure, and the father, as he's gotten a little bit older, is no longer as assured, no longer as confident or as good as uh, the son is now.